Captain's Log Supplemental. Uh, it seems as though someone managed to delete the entire Vulcan database from our computers. Lieutenant Mira believes it to be the actions of Ensign Miller. Uh, Miller alleged that Lieutenant Mira relies too heavily on, and I quote, the work of her ancestors and needs to engage with science more directly. Normally this wouldn't be a problem, but we were relying on some historical Vulcan astrometrics data to speed up the remapping of this sector. I'll be revoking Miller's holodeck privileges and stationing him under Mira to assist with both the cartography and the rebuild now. I hope he enjoys data entry. Welcome back, everybody, to Captain's Log Supplemental. We are a Star Trek rewrite podcast going through the entire Star Trek canon universe in chronological order. So. Boop. Oh, that was it then. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, t- just totally lost my train of thought there. Hi, wow. I'm Stanford. We're just going to wrap up episode 25 here. And, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Man. Uh, I'm Stanford. I'm one of the co-hosts. Thank you, Chris, for that Hold wonderful in- introduction. Shut up. Let me do it. I'll do it. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> He's recovering from an illness. Give him a yeah. break. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I'll take that excuse. <laughs> All right. Hold on. As always, I am joined by my friends, uh, Stanford. Hi, that's me. Rob. Hello. And Mariah. Hi there. Um, sorry, Chris, I do have to say, um, I, I know we have a very important podcast, but I want to mark a very special occasion, which is today. O- okay. Um, our very own producer, Mariah, has um, gained the accolade of actual gamer today because she had Good. to look up a bunch of shit on the Stardew Wiki in order to figure oh, out how man. to romance Ooh. somebody. I'm Stardew tired of Wiki. not knowing how to do stuff. That's like, <laughs> the Stardew Wiki is like the thing that I open immediately upon playing Stardew Valley. Look, it's, it's required. This is, this is why, I don't know, I shouldn't have to do homework and research. <laughs> but you don't have, have to. You don't you have sound to. sound a lot like your husband right now. Yeah, I don't have to, Chris, but I've been playing this game for a c- a couple years now exactly you've played it a bunch now so now you're just like all right like i don't feel like figuring out all this extra little bullshit i'm just gonna pull up the website my second monitor i'm gonna just read it what do you think is extra bullshit because i'm not even married yet christopher (laughs) well like you know just like everybody's fucking like loves and schedules and bullshit oh my god (laughs) i i come into the room i come into the room and she's sitting there cycling through secret notes with her phone in her hand just tapping away at the wiki (laughs) no i have like uh, when i'm playing stardew valley i have no less than 20 tabs open (laughs) it's ridiculous Although, uh, fuck fishing. It's the worst fishing ever. Oh, that's Rob's when favorite Rob part of the game. Comes, yeah, yeah. That's when the Rob comes back play. to Pennsylvania, he's going to do all the fishing for me because all of <laughs> all right. like the tasks I need to do, it's fishing related. Um, She did lose her Stardew virginity tonight as well. So the congratulations on that as well. Wait, who'd you, who, who'd you bang? Emily. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, because all of the dudes are misogynistic and douchey you can't fix or them. old i or mean old. <laughs> uh, i guess like uh, what's the doctor's name he's okay old yeah old, old okay weird old. Dude. <laughs> that's fair fair even I mean, though I'll... like i think like he's definitely probably younger than us in the game <laughs> <laughs> We don't talk uh, about that. Chris. Obviously, uh, Leah is best girl, so like I'm a little uh, disappointed. Yeah, L- L- Leah and Abigail were 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 my 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 go to wives for that. I was trying to go for like either Shane or Sebastian, but then I realized I don't want to hate myself. So well, yeah, yeah. yeah I definitely say Shane, don't go with Shane. I say you in particular, actually. it's like a uh, spoiler alert for anybody who's not played the game. Like it's like, oh, he's getting better. Oh no, no, he's he's not. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is like a real person who just doesn't magically get better once you marry him. Yeah, that's why I, I'm like, okay, I'm not doing this. I'm gonna be I'm I'm going girl. Mm. Girl on girl action here. Yeah. The old plant land. What <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that one yet. Uh oh yeah. Oh, fuck, that's funny. 
Well, so on anyways, that note. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. Thank you, Carry honey. On. Congratulations again. Um, so today's episode, episode twenty five of season two. Um, what is it called? Hold on, I'm gonna, bounty. Oh, I got bounty. Bounty. I got yeah. I got too yeah. distracted talking about the, Stardew the, Valley sex. Yeah, bounty. The quicker picker rubber. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, so we're, 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 it's the penultimate episode of the second season, um, before they, we, this is the episode before we actually get like a, a season long arc of, of stuff. So just had to, had to squeeze this, this masterpiece in. Mm. <laughs> um, all right. So start out with our cold open. We, uh, we come to kind of Enterprise orbiting a planet. There's uh, some other little ship that's parked next to it. Uh, Archer and Trip have been recalled from their research slash um, relaxation mission on whatever planet it was. I don't remember what they called it. Okay, but like, does rock climbing ever go well for these people? <laughs> no, no, it does not. It seems like every time they talk about or show rock climbing happening, someone is falling or getting hurt. Well, yeah. even when they have an alleged rock climbing expert with them, they get he hurt. got hurt twice. The, the expert got hurt. Yeah. yeah. The, the very first time he was introduced as a rock climbing expert, he got hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I can only only posit that he is in fact not a rock climbing expert, and he made that bullshit up. I mean, he he grew up on a freighter. How much of a rock climbing expert could he actually be? Yeah, but based on my understanding of the percentage of times that rock climbing results in accident, it's one hundred percent. So he may still mm -hmm. be an expert. Yeah. Yeah. yeah also, well. for all we know, that is like a major part of his personality. So. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Well, it's a practical jokester. Yeah. yeah. Rock climber, practical joker. That Speaking of which, the, we're talking the, about an individual who is not in this episode, even on camera. Not like, even, he does, not <laughs> even show up. Not once. Oh, Travis, uh, man. Uh, well, okay. So apparently, the ship is a Telluride ship. Uh, Captain Scalar rudely asks what Enterprise is doing there, but then immediately changes tone. He's like, what? You guys are relaxing? Let me tell you about all these sweet vacay spots. <laughs> My it, notes uh, here are like, wow, what a nice guy. I'm assuming he's <laughs> going to betray them. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I mean, it is Enterprise. So yeah, that's what is, that is what's going to happen. Um, the Tellurites, by the way, are officially the Tell people right. of Stanford. <laughs> <laughs> Tellurite. Not tell right. you right. Tell right. right. You, I won't insult your people who enjoy an argument. Oh my god, this see and my note here is <laughs> arguing is amazing fun and I get it. Like yeah. <laughs> Although you. and there I say is. this later, like for a people that love to argue to the point where it's a national sport for them, they're really bad at it. They're not good. Yeah. But I guess yeah, that makes sense because the Klingons are also bad at everything that involves a war, so <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So anyway, psych. He didn't want to chat about vacation spots and starts, you know, pew pewing, uh, and shoots Archer and Trip and uh, and you know captures Archer and uh, makes his escape. I uh, just want to note that maybe they could have benefited from security personnel when they're meeting a strange alien uh, that they have not had contact with before. Just saying, it's something they've done in the past and chose not to this time. You, you know what else I think they should work on? This is the second time now we've seen. A relatively small, low-powered vessel ripped free of these, like, emergency clamps. clamps that people keep talking <laughs> about. Like, if it's an emergency clamp, you think it would be able to withhold, like, stand up to at least a shuttle. Like, this is a tiny little ship. I mm -hmm. think, um, I think, uh, and, and if I could add, add a third note here, um... Maybe if you're going to get into some fifty cuffs next to the alien ship, you try to drive the fight back onto your own ship rather than charging headlong into the alien ship in order to get knocked <laughs> out there. Well, he he had a mission and it was to do, and he done did. So. Yeah, he done got did. He he got he he done did. Uh, so yep, they uh, the Telluride little shuttle escapes with. Tellerite. No, very, very little tell, Tellerite. Tellerite. There's not even a U in it, Chris. Tellerite. There is. No, it's T-E-L-L-A-R-I-T-E. Tellerite. Well, apparently I spelled it wrong then. <laughs> that would explain it. I'm going to need you to do a quick control H on that document, please. Uh, that's, that's too much work. Um, 
Oh, so, that's a that's so, an yeah. obscure word processor uh, <laughs> uh, hotkey uh, joke there for y'all. You're welcome. Yes, for that for that niche crowd there, <laughs> the the word processor enthusiast. Um, so the the Tellerite t- Tello Tellerite ship escapes despite Enterprise's meager efforts to retain it. Uh, it's like haha, docking clamps, whatever, and then shoots its engine and then skedaddles. Um. Paul is soon recalled from the surface, and we are introduced to the terrible B plot of this episode. <laughs> oh god! Oh god! Uh, she has looks like she has some type of microbe, um, and both her and, and Flocks have to go through some decon, which you know right away is always not a good sign. And, and like, uh, and like, to Paul's like, we have to go through decon, and Flocks is like, yep, and she's like, okay, and she kind of like heads in there. Flocks like starts unbuttoning his shirt as he's heading in in a very like, if this was a sitcom, they'd be going into a hotel room to fuck kind of mm. shot. <laughs> and I'm like, well, Flocks did not look upset to be like heading in there. Yeah, well, that doesn't really jive with the next scene with him. But we'll, we'll no. no, I know, which is why it's kind of kind of jarring. Mm. Um. So uh, back back to the the Tellerite shuttle. Archer is uh, in a containment cell, and uh, we Captain Scalar is is not feeling talkative, and basically threatens to stun Archer into submission if he doesn't shut his yap. <laughs> when he's threatening Archer, I'm like, hey, this guy's the best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back to the to the to the B plot. Uh, the microbe is proving more stubborn uh, than Flock expected, so they got to try some some different rub down fluids. Yeah, decon gel E. This yeah, is the last I don't know why time. I that. Fun trivia. This is the last time we see decon gel on camera. Oh, thank God. Uh, <laughs> we are speaking of which we are. We get our unnecessarily horny decon rub down scene, which uh, to be complete... fair, as fair as I can be, because this episode's going to get worse. The camera does not fuck to Paul as hard as usual. It goes horny for some dad bod, though. Like <laughs> the camera is all over flocks. Yeah, I mean it did it did it did capture to Paul as well, but yeah, it was not shy about capturing uh Flox's hairy um hairy body. I'm uh, glad that they installed a privacy screen in there too. <laughs> Why were there so many tight shots on sections of the body? Why? Why? Well, you know, Why? and then and then I'm like, ew, what's up with Flox's spine? Because his spine is like a series of folds in his skin. Yeah. Like it's gross. Yeah. And it's not like they were like hard folds either, because like shortly thereafter T'Pol's like rubbing it. Yeah, and this um, is where my notes are like, what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> like cause she starts <laughs> she starts rubbing the bejesus out of that yeah. man's spine she folds. Is into it man like, if if to paul had one kink it's spinal folds man she is yeah. all over those fucking things oh uh-huh. so after that abortion of a scene uh <laughs> we get we cut back to archer and scalar uh scalar reports to someone that he has the uh the fugitive and is planning to bring him to to Konos. Kronos, however the fuck you say it Kronos, um, yeah 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 or yeah, no even i'm sorry it's for you it's completely Kronos, not like that Hey, at least it's spelled <laughs> weird for that one. Q O apostrophe O N O S. Yeah, Kronos. No what's the problem? <laughs> Unless you're um, in the Kelvin timeline, then it's K R O N O S. Because that fucking makes sense. Well, talk to fucking uh, the Roddenberry. Fucking Roddenberry. Uh, looks like Archer has a bounty uh, placed on him from escaping. Uh, Rurapenthe, the only person to ever escape from Rurapenthe up till this point, and then like tons of people do it. Um, How did they even know? Like, why? I feel like it would be more likely that they would have just assumed that he had died because they talk about how everyone's just worked to death there. Yeah, but also, where would the body have gone? Into the snowdrifts. He's got a point. Uh. So, um, back on the Enterprise, uh, they have tracked. Uh, what they thought was the the shuttle signal, but a, they find the decoy that Scalar left um, to to kind of throw them, you know, the little red herring, so they they don't track the ship. Uh, Malcolm does enjoy uh, exploding it though. Yeah. I was like, press yeah. that button so hard. Yeah, fuck He's that like, buoy. <laughs> <laughs> what, what trip is like? You take care of that, please. He's like, oh fuck yes, oh. <laughs> with goddamn pleasure. 
<laughs> uh, Archer tries uh, back on the shuttle to negotiate for his release. Sklar says he doesn't take bribes from criminals. No, yeah, he's basically Dog the Bounty Hunter. It's... Which which begs the question, does that mean he, like, takes bribes from, like, not criminals? Well, that's just payment. Like, if you're being bribed <laughs> by a non-criminal, that's just being paid for a job. Oh, okay, okay. You're yeah. right, you're no, right. no, no, no. It's called lobbying. Mm. Only yes. if he is a government. Yeah, that's true. Um, he Although doesn't this seem... guy does have some pretty strong sovereign citizen guy of uh, vibe to him, so <laughs> uh, he does not seem like a fan of the Klingons. Um, yeah, yeah. However, Archer, so. Archer starts that. Oh, I thought you were in charge, Gambit. That mm-hmm. like all like, Hollywood hostages do. Uh huh. Yeah, it's very bad. Um, back to the B plot. Uh, T'Pol is trying to meditate and is growing very agitated and tries to leave. Uh, Flock stops her. Um, T'Pol tries to order him to open it and loses it a bit when he refuses. Um, he offers her a, a sedative to maybe take the edge off. We, we kind of see her starting to unravel here. Uh, back on the shuttle, we find out that Scalar is trying to buy his ship back uh, from, from Impound uh, with the reward money he's supposed to get for Archer. Yeah, a whole 9,000 Darseks, which is fucking good. You, you, yeah. I yeah. have no, I have no idea how much a Darsec is. Like, I don't yeah. know what that can, apparently it can buy you most of a freighter. Mm, most, most of a freighter. Um, shortly thereafter, another bounty hunter inter- intercepts Galar, uh, and attacks looking to take Archer for the, for the reward money. Uh, Archer convinces Galar to let him help fly the ship while he makes repairs. And Archer takes them to a planet to try oh. to escape. <laughs> this alien too. I'm like, what the D and D dungeon master looking motherfucker? Because he's like, <laughs> he's like got the bald but the white long hair on the sides, and he's short uh-huh. and like angry. <laughs> yeah, it's like the the art direction was make him like ugly as fuck. Like and his his the his, uglier the better. His ship looks like someone just took a tugboat model and slapped extra plastic onto it. <laughs> That's 100% probably what happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, they genocide a couple of those little decoys to distract the other ship, and and it works, but they are forced to land and fix their ship. Why does that work? Like, aren't those decoys just, like, making subspace warp signatures? That's not what they're targeting. Like It's foggy. Shut up. That's why it worked. All right. My my mistake. I apologize. (laughs) Couldn't see out the windshield. They were flying on sensors. Yeah, but subspace sensors, they're right there. The fucking radar would have done the trick. Like, yep, yep, yep. no, shut up. It's sensors. Right. Fair Man. enough. I apologize. My mistake. Uh, meanwhile, back in the beauty pot, uh, T'Pol is getting all hot and bothered on Flox. Uh, the doctor <sighs> diagnoses her with clinical horniness. That's <laughs> exactly what it is, too. Uh, yeah. Of course, we sure soon learn, there, learn thereafter that it is indeed the Ponfar, the dumbest dumbest thing in all of star trek already dumb now fun fact the ponfar was originally just male vulcans it was explicitly described that way more than huh. once but because the writers of this show wanted to see to paul writhe around half naked they decided to make her affected by it too uh, yeah that makes sense that, that really is um, what happened isn't it so anyway it's time to fuck or die um, and, and, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. Hundreds of years of advanced medicine, and they don't have like, I don't know, a, a horniness suppressor. Spray? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They don't have like a cold shower pill. How fucking hard could that be? There are med- there are medicines now that like suppress libido. You know what? Let, let's be real here. There probably is one for male Vulcans. And and like, yeah, you're not wrong. But also like, and then the dialogue here just gets fucking stupid. I don't remember exactly what he said, what he said, but and content warning, because I'm about to get very dirty. But basically the line out of T'Pol is, oh, if I don't get your throbbing cock in my tight little pussy, I'll die. Like, that's basically <laughs> what she fucking said. And it's so fucking ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's gross. And I, who directed this? I didn't look, actually. I didn't. It was a LeVar Burton again, because I'm going to fucking <laughs> Oh, no, don't say that. Hold on, I actually have the page pulled up. So it was directed oh, by Roxanne Dawson. By a, is, that a, is that a woman? That sounds like a woman. It is. Uh, well, you know, you can only direct what you what the script is, I guess. I don't oh, know. she's Torres. 
Oh shit, really? Yeah. Well, I mean, she didn't write the episode, oh. but yeah. Yikes. I guess she was like say. she was like, well, this is what the the men gave us, so let's let's fucking give it a, <laughs> give it our all. We're dialing your horniness to 11. Here we go. I want you to act like you're in a Cinemax <laughs> porn <laughs> movie. Oh god. It was um it was ba- it was bad. So yeah, um we go to the planet where where Scalar and Archer have crashed and uh we, we, you know, we learn that Scalar will, says he'll use the money for something useful, not like hookers and beer like that other guy. His brother, uh, I believe? Yeah. No, no, no. He's talking about the other bounty hunter at that point. Oh, oh, the dungeon master. Oh, okay. that's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah he yeah, yeah. On Orion Slave Girls. <laughs> um, he wants to go to back to being a freighter captain. Uh, he explains his ship was impounded for trying to travel through Klingon space, just, just like the tiniest corner. The most insignificant, tiniest corner. Well, of well, space. well. He found out that there is no such thing as an insignificant corner of Klingon space. Mm-hmm, he did, and he uh, he had to give them all his cargo and his ship because of that. Uh, Whenever people Archer... say like they confiscated my ship too, I always wonder like how did you get back here then? <laughs> <laughs> Teleporters. Uh huh. Uh, Archer takes the opportunity while he's waxing uh, about his uh, his, sa- his sob story uh, to sabotage the engine or something. Which, obviously. Uh, like, this guy's a fucking dumbass. Why would yeah, you just, trust Archer? I love, I love how Archer's just in the background. There's, like, smoke coming up from his ship. He's just shit on fire. He's like, of course I was sabotaging the engine, you fucking moron. Yeah, and he's like, are you fucking with me? And Archer's like... Yes, what you're trying to take me so I can be killed. And yeah. then in probably one of the worst executed like transitions of this show entirely, the guy's like, well, fuck you then. And then I guess they didn't need to be making those repairs in the first place because the next thing yeah. we know, their ship is fine and they're at a space station. Well, hold like, on. We're not there yet. We're not no, there no, yet. I know. But I'm just so fucking mad at like, then what was the it's fucking bad. point? Yeah, no, I, I, I agree 100%. So I'm like, oh, I guess we're just at the space station now. Cool. Uh, anyway, back to the B-plot. Uh, Paul wakes up from sedation and states she's hungry for phlox dong. That's what uh, I said. I'm hungry. <laughs> hungry for a dick. Like, yeah, yeah if the writing is really fucking bad here. Uh, my, my favorite out, line here is, the, don't be frightened. I won't hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> she also points out there's this one cure for a fever. <laughs> Although, and it, like, it, and it's and it's penis. And maybe this is me not understanding Vulcan physiology, but can she not just like rub one out and be good to go? No, it requires ins- insertion. Apparently, you know. Okay, there's nothing she can insert. <laughs> okay, um, she's okay. in a fucking okay. decon medical room. Hold on. Okay. Are we talking about Star Trek? Y- yes. 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 Yes, we are. Yeah, yeah, we didn't accidentally switch to a porn. No. It's not even like bad fanfic. Like this is like honest to god. I mean, enterprise it might worst. honestly. It's on the level. <laughs> this of bad was fanfic. on network television. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We early two thousands TV. Um. So anyway, isn't sexual assault funny when it's a hot woman doing it, guys? It's so funny. Well, I don't know. She's being aggressive, and she's not taking no for an answer. But she's also not like outright assaulting i'd say it's more close to like sexual harassment yeah, but i think the point stands <laughs> but like it's, yes uh, i agree with your your take on like that patriarchal scene. nonsense of like well it's funny when a man's being assaulted yeah yeah mm-hmm. yes uh flox is all you know nervous and not wanting to do the things uh well she is very much insisting to do the things uh, much to Flax's relief, however, Trip interrupts them with num nums. Then she like eats her okay. food all <laughs> and like sexily and weird. Well, I guess. She she eats her with salad her with her fingers, which is like a thing, right? The Vulcans don't eat with their hands, and she's just munching this fucking salad. And then to no, Jolie Blalock's yeah, to B- Jolie Blalock's like like credit, she acts the fuck out of just. I fucking the hell out of trip. Like there's a several second shot of her staring at him. That's like, Oh Jesus Christ. Like she's <laughs> so bad. She wants I, to destroy that man's dick. I had a note in here that said the only 
positive thing that came out of this whole B plot is Jolene Blalock like finally got to like show some of her range and she did a really great job. <laughs> oh yeah, she was she range. was given. Yeah. Yeah, Jolene uh, Blalock uh, plays horny to Paul. Great. Like it was perfect. Yeah. Uh yep, it was uh yep, that was a scene. Uh the Enterprise has found the planet where Archer went down, uh but only find the other crash ship. Um after a brief conversation with them, they they find out that that they're probably heading for Klingon space. And away they go. This is where we get the stupid transition to, oh, I guess they're not on the planet anymore. Um, because that was the last place we saw them, and then all of a sudden they're gone to this other space station where uh, Scalar has gone to his brother for sh some ship part that uh, his brother says he'll give him if he leaves him the fuck alone about everything from now on. And I'm not saying that, like, Archer is good at his job in any way, shape, or form. So I'm not surprised, but, like... In that pan of, like, the station... By the way, again, CGI budget, obviously pretty good. The ships and the station look pretty cool. No mm -hmm. notes. There is at least one, but I think two Vulcan ships at this station. No way for Archer to, to get in the, a hold of any of them, because you know if a Vulcan saw Archer, he'd be like, yo, this guy's got me, and the Vulcans would fuck that Tellaride up. <laughs> would they, uh, though? Or would yeah. they just, like, conveniently not recognize him no because the vulcans would not jump like would not skip an opportunity to save a human because that makes them look good mm, it's, it's, fucking it's, it's, nothing it's, it's, vulcans vulcans know no emotion other than showing off their yeah. entire society is built upon showing off mm -hmm. so yep um his brother sklar's brother mentions that their ship is cannibalized through the klingons it's basically a the, a hull at this point there's no Nothing basically left of it to, for them to buy back. Archer then goes on about his uh, sob story about how he's going to be disemboweled and stuff. <laughs> I'm like, wah. <laughs> that Tellarize very much like, dude, I do not care. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here, I mean, like, Archer comes up with, like, he, like the, we fade out on Archer being like, I got a plan. And we don't actually hear what the plan is. Once again, yeah, no, no I, context. I, I wrote that I'm assuming it was the dumbest plan ever. Turns out I was correct. It was, it was pretty stupid. Uh, however, unfortunately, the B-plot is somehow still not over yet. Uh, Paul is full on losing it on Flux and is now just more aggressive than horny at this point. Mm -hmm. Um in a feint uh, to get her dosed, Flox gives her a fake code to leave the, the med bay. Well, uh, first then... she writhes around on the floor sweatily. Um, <laughs> Flox offers her an injection. <sighs> she says she only wants one kind of injection from Flox. <laughs> and then she writhes around a little more before Seminal. before he he, he offers the, the fake code, mm -hmm. which and immediately then like, doesn't work. Yeah, she, he's like, I'm going to get you to, oh, God, my face. Um <laughs> And she immediately incapacitates him. Um, I uh, she, I was worried that this scene would end with her just going nuts on unconscious flocks. <laughs> I'm very yeah. glad that didn't happen. I am glad yeah. it didn't happen. Yeah. But I was like, yeah. oh no, oh no, please don't. <laughs> yeah, they, they were quite willing to go that far, apparently. Anyway, she freaking yanks the panel off the wall and uh, and opens the door. And she gone, she gone. Uh, <laughs> Flux radios Malcolm and, and tells him to lock down the the, the dick. Um, not not the dick, which I mean, he also no, does what, lock down. That's what Chapal would like to on. lock down is some dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we we quickly we we then see uh, Malcolm wandering around uh, in the spacesuit. Um, and oh no, it's Malcolm's weakness to Paul's bum. This is uh, well, <laughs> and this is where this is where I wrote my notes. Like, careful, men, she's unarmed and considered very sexy. Like, because <laughs> uh, so because Reed gives us basically notes. Like, all right, everyone, be careful. Don't let her fuck you. Like, yeah, <laughs> strap strap up. Make sure you got a full body condom on. It's it's it'll be fine. Uh, so she runs away from Malcolm initially, um, and uh, they they quickly corner her, and, and she shouts something in Vulcan at, as he, I don't know, sexily charges Malcolm, and then he shoots her. Which um, I was like, just shoot her, just shoot her, shoot her, just shoot her, shoot her. And then she rushes at him tits first, and then, and then he shoots her in the tit, mind you. Yeah. And it's well, like, I mean, that's... oh, okay, now you're going to shoot her. Yeah. 
Um, so back uh, with uh, Archer, uh, he is taken by the Klingons. All right, uh, let's see your dumb plan, Archer. Here we go. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, they short Sklar by about a third. He only gets 6,000 instead of his promised 9,000 um, dick de, 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 de coins, whatever the fuck they were called. Um, um, fucking, um, dude, you don't, it's Darsex, man. Come on. Yeah, Darsex. Yeah, those those stupid things. Um, Archer immediately picks his cuffs with the, the thing that he was left by, uh, by Sklar so, um, and unlocks oh, his cell with okay. a thingy. Okay, hold on. So he's got these. Okay, so here's here's okay. Fucking, they're at the station, and Archer's like, "I got a plan, right?" And we get a cut. Now the implication is they are running late to meet with these Klingons, but so the Tellarite's got to rush to get them there. So assumedly, this has only been like an hour or two, right, before they meet up with the Klingons. Okay, Mm -hmm. and like he goes onto the Klingon ship, manacled. And then, like, the Klingons are like, here. And then he's like, okay, so I'm gonna, so he's got a lock pick for the manacles, which is basically like a pin he has to pull with his mouth. Okay, mm. fine. But then the manacles include a secret compartment <laughs> in which he has stashed a, like, door hacking device. Yeah. How the fuck did they have time to invent these goddamn manacles and manufacture them on the way to meeting the Kling? What the fuck? Listen. I feel like I feel like Archer was basically like, here's my plan. If only we had some like I'm going to need some trick manacles that I can unlock and we'll have a secret compartment in them for a door hacking device. And the Tellarite's like, you're not going to fucking believe this. <laughs> I so I had to rewind and rewatch this because the first time I watched it, I was like. Did he just lick those manacles open? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see there's a little pin there. He pulls out with his mouth. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I caught it. It does take time. him a like, weirdly nope. long time to figure it out, though. Like he doesn't know how his teeth work for a second there. Yeah. So uh, he he gets he gets out of his cell. the um, The alarm immediately sounds. Um, uh, so some Klingon guard comes running, and despite Archer's surprise attack, he almost gets choked out uh, by the Klingon using his own manacles. How? Um, how can Archer ever ever beat a full grown? perfectly capable Klingon adult. Uh, Because Klingons are uh, exactly as weak or strong as they need to be for the plot, that's why. Like, this Klingon... It's Starfleet Starfleet standard issue. He's got those drugs that uh, they use in Strange New Worlds. Oh, (laughs) sure. Because this Klingon's about, like, five times as strong as him, and the Klingon's just like, I'm gonna let you win. Yep. So he gets knocked out by some manacles. Somehow, he rests away from the Klingon, who is just before choking him with them. Um, he, uh, he kind of fights his way to the escape pod. Uh, by the way, what okay, the fuck well, was that roll? What? Uh, that <laughs> I have roll combat roll. What the fuck? Pre- preemptive, <laughs> preemptive combat roll. He's running down a hallway and these Klingons come around the corner behind him. And he's like, fuck me. And he, before, like, he before dies. they even, the Klingons even get around the corner. They have fucking not rolls. even quite, he has not actually seen them yet. And he like dives into this combat role and the Klingons come around the corner and, and are like, clearly, what the fuck is this guy doing? Clearly laughing too hard to actually be good shots at this point. Right. You know what it is? It's like it's like they're actually secretly playing hell divers, and you do the obligatory dive into the back mm-hmm. of the pelican. Mm-hmm. That's what it was. Yeah. Well, you know what the other thing is? It's just like the ceiling being on the floor is right. is tactically. You scary. know, and I will say, you know, I, to be fair, the joke's on us because it works. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, that um, is that is who the joke is on. Yep. So he gets into an escape pod now. Uh huh. Fun fact: It had been mentioned before that Klingon ships do not have skate pods. Mm. Yep. Now, yep. I am willing to say that this may not have actually been an escape pod. It was just a hatch and a buoy looking thing. Like it's it didn't. Lo- it didn't look like it had a lot of boosters or anything on it. So, like, I'm not sure it was actually an escape pod. To give them the credit. I'm also not sure what of this was Archer's plan because it looked like he was fiddle fucking with some other doors first and mm. then failed to do that and then went to this escape pod instead. That he shot open, by the way, which I'm sure had no 
no effect on the structural integrity of that pot at all. Oh, yeah. Um, no, no, no. Famously, that's how doors get opened in Klingon ships. Like, hmm. I mean, that, I mean, that tracks, right? <laughs> hey, you know, in, in the earlier scenes with T'Pol, we found out that, you know, starship panels in, in Starfleet anyway, they're really just held on by Velcro. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And she just ripped so that Why don't you get your fingernails wall. under there? It's not like, it's not like being able to get out of the medical decon room is important. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, so he, he escapes, the Klingons are like, well, he's not gonna fucking get away, we'll just, like, turn this bitch around, it's fine. <laughs> um, back on the Enterprise, Phlox informs Paul that her clinical horniness has been cured. Um, she apparently doesn't remember what she did. Um, Phlox, for some reason, plays coy when she asks if they boned. Um, even though he was very much not on board with it the entire time. Wait, that he's did like, you? Mm, maybe we did, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I don't have I don't, any notes on this scene. Wait, no. Yeah, I think we, I think you skipped, you skipped the grappler part. Oh, I did. Yes, you're right. You're Cause right, I right. have grappler, grappler. Yes. Grappler. Yes. yes. yes you're right. Sorry. We've I did. Been, I skipped a couple been, lines. Yeah. The enterprise intercepts. Us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. The enterprise intercepts the Klingon ship before they're able to recapture Archer. Uh, they, you know, they hook the, we actually, for the, was it, there's only like the second or third time we've seen the, the grappler in action, right? I think it's the third time we've actually seen it. Like on camera, yeah. in quotes, because yeah. it's a CGI grappler. Um, yeah, and like and like this season, they've been edging us with the grappler because they keep mentioning it. It's true. Yeah. This is yeah. the final time that they actually fight. This is the last time they actually, or the this time they actually managed to fire it. And like, boy, that thing is so dumb. Like it looks yeah. stupid as shit. It's it's very dumb. And uh, however, it is effective, and they wrangle uh, Archer's pod. And uh, immediately escape the dumb Klingons, I guess. I don't know. Um, they're just like, oh, we got them. Let's get out of here. Bye. Can well, and they, they, they shot their weapons or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. Can you imagine being stuck in that little tiny pod and then a huge <laughs> starship, right? A huge starship moving at combat speed latches on and you just get yanked. <laughs> yeah. So like. I didn't anyway, like this is the anyway. last. This is the last episode with uh, Archer because he is now paced inside that pod. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like there's no way he's not just like dressing well, the side yeah. of the inside of that thing. You see it. It's the, the inertial dampener within the and the pod has saved his life. Oh sure. Oh sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. yeah. Don that nerdy voice like we don't have a <laughs> podcast about Star Trek, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so yep, so yep, uh, archers, archers saved, yay! Uh, we, yeah, that's the where we cut to Phlox talking to Paul about how she's not horny anymore. Uh, and, um, and we get a little, uh, goodbye communique from Scalar. He's like, ah, oh, you made it, brr, God, no promises on not going after the bounty again, her. <laughs> I fucking, I, I fucking hate that joke so much. Yeah. It's like, you won't come after that bounty again, really. He's like, no promises. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> like, Read fucking, time for target practice. Shut the fuck up, dude. What a dumb joke. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was stupid. And that was the end of this episode. So, yep. That, um, <sighs> it was like, honestly, it was so bad. It was entertaining. <laughs> Yeah, especially everything, like, the B-plot was just awful the whole way through, but the A-plot was pretty fun. I like, I gave it, oh, so we're rating now, right? So, one yes, to five, yes, rating on a, on a one zero to five threshold. Zero's threshold. Um, go ahead. You, I, you I gave it a two. I was, I would have given it a three if the B-plot was at least not sexist bullshit. Yeah, yeah. no, I think that's where I'm at, yeah, because, as I said, like, it was fun, but the B-plot was so... So stupid. So fucking uh, inappropriate. Yeah, I, uh, it was I, it was bad. I was gonna give it a one, but the grappler brought it up to a two. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair enough. Fair, All right, fair. solid twos across the board. That seems appropriate for this episode. You know, if he combat rolled one more time, I might have been able to squeak it up to a two point five. Ah, oh, that fucking roll, <laughs> man. So it, it's crazy to me that Torres was the person they got to direct this episode, and like. I, I can't even imagine how much pressure you would be under as, like, to Paul's actress to, like, actually go through with this episode. Like, it's got to be terrible. Yep. Yeah. Um, it was, it was, uh, it was not a good, not a good episode. So anyway. When she apparently also the... directed a Christian film, so I've got all kinds of questions now. Hmm. 
fun. But okay, I gotta be more. I get. I need more specifics. What was the Christian film about? It was called Breakthrough. It was from 2019. I've never fucking heard of it. But hold on. Neither have I. I'm oh. sure I can find a blurb. Yeah, I need a synopsis. Um. Does it star Kevin Sorbo? Oh God. You know, funnily, uh, no, it doesn't look like it does. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. When her 14-year-old son... a dr- Christian movie. <laughs> when her 14-year-old son drowns in a lake, a faithful mother prays for him to come back from the brink of death and be healed. Wait, if he drowned in a lake, he can't come back from the brink of death because he's dead. <laughs> hey, drowned Chris, means. Chris, Chris. First of all, through Jesus, all things are possible. So write that down. <laughs> Oh God! Uh, wow. That feels blasphemous coming from you. Oh man! What blasphemous coming from me? It's not like I went to Bible school for like four years of my childhood. Oh boy! Well, before this gets worse, I think we'll head to the break <laughs> and then we'll <laughs> come back. Uh, we'll do a little, little deep dive on bounty hunters. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. All right. So for today's deep dive, I uh, I thought about doing a deep dive on Ponfar, and then my brain couldn't take the vast amount of bullshit the research for that would be. Um, so I decided to do um, a little little stroll through bounty hunters in Star Trek. Um, surprisingly, with the amount of content, I was surprised at how few instances of bounty hunters there are. Oh man. How, mm, there, yeah, there can't be that many. I can only think of a couple. Yeah. Yeah, there, there is only a couple, basically. There's what, uh, well, okay. So the first, the first time any bounty hunter really comes up is in um, the original series, uh, The Escape Artist. Um, or I'm not sorry, not the original series. Um, nope. Or less of a train of thought. Hold on. Back it up. So the original series is that one that came first? It's got like no, Will Shatner no. and Leonard Nimoy. No, those, hold on. those old scientists. I was, I was, I was skipping around on my notes. Disregard. Uh, oh, so the best thing to do actually is to go through your notes from top to bottom. No, shut up. That's <laughs> dumb. Um, so they're really the 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 first instance that uh, I could find anywhere noted. Of a um, of a bounty hunter was in the next generation in one of the later seasons. Um, it wasn't actually anything in original series on it. Um, it was in the the episode titled Lower Decks, where uh, we kind of have that huh. that that look into kind of the 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 various ensigns and whatnot that are in the lower decks of the Enterprise. Uh, this is the episode where ensign C- is it Cito or Saito? I can't remember. Um, who was disguised as a Bajoran terrorist to uh, let the Cardassian Jorit doll. Um, he kind of acts as a prisoner for him, so he look, kind of looks like a bounty hunter and, and can escape back to Cardassian space. That is the first time any type of bounty hunter is referenced in Star Trek, which blew my mind. I'm like, how can that possibly be true? But, um, I mean, well, and, and this may actually shock you, Chris, but um, the uh, the job of bounty hunter was actually invented by uh, Lawrence Kasdan in Empires of Strikes Back. Um, so Stop. 1981 Stop was the first time a bounty hunter Shut was ever face. mentioned Shut in up. the English language. Stop talking. I hate you. I, I hate you so I much. I feel like it's it's not all that surprising, though, because like the vast majority of, we, of ships that you see in Star Trek, they're all like multi part of it. Well, not just that. They're all like owned by state actors. Like they're mm. they're not mm. most of them, the vast majority are are not independently owned, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even the ones that are, they seem to always be working under contract from some, you know, government. Right. Um the the next couple instances uh that we see it are both actually in Voyager. Mm-hmm. Where uh the 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 Ramarins uh employ a kind of bounty hunter called Tracers who track down people who try to leave their world. Um, this is in the Voyager episode, Unforgettable. Um, unforgettable. Unforgettable. Where, the, like, the alien lady, like, who's a Tracer, falls in love with Chakotay and then gets 
captured herself and yeah it's the whole thing uh do you remember that one one stamper uh it's the kind of thing where like not specifically but only because that outlines like three or four different episodes <laughs> so it's hard to tell um i think i think so but i'm not 100 percent sure is chakotay like the de facto lady killer of voyager i guess uh yeah uh, well no tom paris probably no but no but tom paris only ends up hooking up with one lady in the whole show that's true. He kind of like flirts with a bunch of girls. Like Kim, first, but... I think, hooks up with more than Tom does. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, then he gets in trouble for banging alien ladies. There isn't really like a lady killer archetype in. Now, mm. don't get me wrong. The ladies pine for like like Chakotay is 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 often like because Seska goes after Chakotay hard. Yeah, um, yeah, that's true. But he's not he's not like like that like stereotypical Captain Kirk kind of dealio. That doesn't exist on Voyager. Right. Not like a not like a Tom Riker or a or a Captain Kirk. Like that's right. That's yeah. not on Voyager. They don't have that archetype. No. Yeah, they also don't have the the bumbling stooges that are uh Trip and Reed, um <laughs> as far as the ladies go. Who are, are perfect gentlemen all right. the time. Right. Yeah. Um so yeah, so there was that one. Then there was the Hazari. Uh, who were also in the Delta Quadrant. Uh, they worked as bounty hunters and prided themselves on honoring the contracts. Uh, they appeared in Think Tank. That's the one that had uh, Jason yep. Alexander as the alien. God, Think uh, Tank's such a good episode. That is a good episode, yeah. Um, after that, there was this episode, um, which was obviously labeled, it's called Bounty, um, that we just watched with this stupidness going on. Uh, after that... Uh, in um, let's see, yeah, this is where we cut um, the escape artist. Uh, where we have uh, where is it? God damn it! So escape artist yeah. is not a TOS episode. It's something else. It is not. No, no. Yeah, I got I got confused because it features mud. Oh, hardcore, okay, that's what I thought. Mud. Okay, yes. I actually uh, thought that might be the episode you were talking about. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> um, where several bounty hunters attempted to capture him and turn him over to Starfleet, although one of, one of them was also a Tellarite, um, who only managed to capture uh, an android copy of Bud. Right. The final um, reference to bounty hunters um, is in Picard, actually, where um, Vatic, who claims to be a bounty hunter when demanding that the crew of the Titan surrender Jack Crusher to her, um, now we're both... Both seven of nine and 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 Bev Crusher observed mm. that her, uh, the vessel was far too formidable to belong to a bounty hunter and wasn't actually even a real bounty hunter. That she just called herself a bounty hunter. She was more like a pirate queen. Yeah, she was badass. Yeah. Then that is the entirety of bounty hunters referenced in Star Trek. Which... No, 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 no. You missed one. Huh. Well, technically several. What? Yeah, so there were these series of androids. They're called the IG series, and oh they're all like the same, but I like fucking hate you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's Data's cousin, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh wait, then there's that dude with the bandages on his head, the one who had the the frontal lobotomy in in order to become a a, a spy for the Imperials, and yeah. Oh, like, uh, yeah. Then there was you. a lizard dude. Um, a guy with a dumb helmet. Yeah, no, there were a lot of bounty hunters. I uh, would like you to go ahead and die in a fire if that'd be all right. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's that, that guy in Hawaii, dog. Like he 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 had that spray can of mace. For the love of God, did y'all watch that show? No. <laughs> uh, oh no. man, my my mom and my stepdad loved that show, so I watched it a couple times when I was because when that I was saw... when we were in like high school or middle school. I saw it advertised all the time and it looked incredibly dumb. Every oh, it was incredibly it. dumb. It was incredibly dumb. I mean, that guy looked like Tiger King before Tiger King was a thing. He wasn't that quite is... that eccentric, but that is a, that is an astute observation as to his, <laughs> he actually, he, to me, he always looked kind of like if Hulk Hogan lived in Hawaii. <laughs> he looks like if Donald Trump was a bounty hunter. Oh, oh God. That's, um, um... Far nicer person than both Hulk Hogan and Donald Trump. <laughs> um, but yeah. That's not saying much. Uh, ACAB includes bounty hunters, by the way. Like, mm -hmm. Well, yep, that concludes our, our bounty hunter foray into Star Trek. Uh, it, was, it was not a lot. 
Not a lot. So how many Darsecs do you think I'm worth? Um, negative 600 because I hate you. Oh, man. Oof. <laughs> so wait, the bounty for me is you have to pay in order for them to take me? <laughs> yes, exactly. Jesus. <laughs> it's like, he's not even worth the paperwork it takes to process uh. him. He's so... <laughs> God damn. All right. Well, when we get back, uh, we'll do a little, little potpourri. Uh, welcome back, everybody. So today for potpourri, um, you know, I felt kind of bad because last time I did potpourri, um, well, okay. Two times ago, we went through all of the intros to the show, and that was a nice refresher. We kind of talked about them all. So, so last time I had potpourri, what I did was I ran us a little quiz, thinking that both of our players would be on kind of like a level playing field because they had just heard all those songs a couple weeks ago. But because I wanted to make it, you know, kind of fun and interesting. I played like a piano version that I had found for them. And Chris, you did not care for that whatsoever. <laughs> um, it had nothing to do with me losing that. It, it, nothing <laughs> at all. So, and, and like, to be fair, Rob is more m musically inclined. So like, I can see how that's somewhat of a disadvantage. So I wanted to give you a chance to um, kind of come back and maybe like, like have, have kind of a rematch here, okay? Oh my god. Are we about to, like, listen to the intro songs on kazoos or something? No, 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 because I want, I, want, I want this to be an even playing field. So I am going to play the actual intro songs that I recorded for the original episode, okay? Uh, so they okay. are the, the correct instruments. They are exactly as you heard them in the, the first time we heard them, so that you are both on the same page like so that it's, it's as even a match as possible okay mm -hmm. all right okay um Why do so i feel like there's a catch here um so we're gonna do the first one now um <laughs> by the way they're all backwards okay here yeah, we go <laughs> next generation Nicely done, Rob. Oh, I All I heard was fucking noise. <laughs> <laughs> Rob gets that for one point. Nicely God, done. I was going to say next generation too, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, next one. Here we go. Voyager. Voyager. Incorrect. Deep Space DS9. Nine. Rob, you can't guess again. You got to let Chris go. He did. Although guess. I believe, I believe I heard you say DS9, Chris. I did, but I also did say Voyager about the same time he did. Yeah. Oh, did you? I didn't hear it. The problem is the music is kind of loud it's so in my loud. ears because I it's have to keep so it loud on the stream. Oh, is it for you too? Oh, I can turn it yeah. down. Yeah, turn it, turn it down a little bit. Here, I'll, I'll replay some of that. Oh, that's better. Yeah, yeah, that's DS9. Is oh, that yeah. better? Now I can hear it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you are both incorrect. That one is actually DS9. Yeah. All right. Next one. Discovery? The card? Oh, oh wait. That damn is, it. That is incorrect, Rob. Faith of the Heart? That is correct. It is Enterprise. Yeah. As soon as I heard the vocals kick in, yeah, I don't, I don't know jumped. how, I don't know how y'all didn't get it from just the electric guitar at the beginning. Like, like the problem is, I, I do not remember like Discovery or Picard's intros at all. Hmm. Hmm. That's going to be I more have, difficult when they're backwards. I haven't watched <laughs> Picard yet. I think most, like, I'm pretty sure I hit skip intro every time on Picard because I'm like, God, I gotta watch this show, God damn it. Hang on, can we take a break for one second? I have to give George his dinner. He's freaking yeah, out. Go ahead. Yeah, I can hear him. All right, I'm back. All right, next one. Here we go. Disco. 
No! Fuck, Rob, just say something. Goddamn. Oh, God. Voyager? I don't know. Uh, no, it is Lower Decks. Oh, yeah. Okay. I hear it now. Please, please stop it. <laughs> oh, what? You don't like that backwards dissonance? <laughs> it's, it's, it's so bad. Uh, all right. Next one. Here we go. Voyager. That is correct. Uh, Sounds horny. Wait, no, not. <laughs> not what I meant. Oh, horny as in there are horns. Like horns, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah Voyager yeah. has a lot of horns in the intro. Next one. I feel like all of the Star Trek from that generation did. There were a lot of horns, yeah. TOS? No. Dude. Oh, yeah. What you got, Rob? I don't recognize it, so I'm going to say Picard. That is correct. It's Picard. Picard. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah it's Picard. Yeah, that kind of soft, flowy shit. Yeah. yeah. All right, next one. Here we go. TOS? No. What? God, this is messing with me so bad. All right, so I remember in the first... Like oh my god, just guess. For God's sakes, please make it stop. Series. It is not the animated series. No, <laughs> okay. that one was Prodigy. <laughs> Poor Chris. Oh. Chris, is like, Chris is like, Rob, guess anything. It's hurting my ears. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I'm legitimately trying to play this game. And, and, like, after you answer, like, I've got all the time in the world. I go listen to the song. <laughs> Rob's <laughs> like, if I, get, if I get his stress levels too high, he'll never win. <laughs> all right, next one. TOS? Jesus, no. I'm just going to keep guessing immediately to make this no, game Strange faster. New Worlds. Strange New Worlds is correct. Good job. Yeah. I hate this so much, Sandra. Oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> Alright, next one. Here we go. There's three more. Three more. Shake them out. Do you want me to tell you which ones you have left available to you? Would that be helpful, Chris? No, no. Just, just fucking go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> TOS. It is not TOS. Anime oh, series. The yeah. animated series is correct. Nicely done, <laughs> yeah, Chris. <laughs> you can tell just because it sounds old and scratchy. But all right, two more, two more. Here we go. Disco. No. Yeah. Nope. Wait, what? This is not Discovery. It, it is not Disco. Oh. TOS. Yeah. TOS. 100%. That one is TOS. There you go, yeah. Chris. Man, why did that sound so much cleaner than the animated series? Because the animated series was done by ba Hanna Barbera, the least funded animation studio that's ever existed. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one. Disco. Disco. <laughs> oh, Chris gets it. I think Chris gets ah, it. Yeah. Uh, Y'all kept saying disco, and I'm like, I, I know. don't know which show this is. Discovery. Discovery, yeah. So. Chris with a comeback. Five yeah. points to Rob's three. Wow. Ooh. Nicely done, gentlemen. That was also stupid and I hated it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. That was fun. Oh, man. That's so good. And I got to come up with another way to fuck with Chris because this is a lot of fun. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. Anyone? Uh, we're, we're actually running a little early tonight. Does anyone have mm -hmm. anything else they'd like to like to throw in there? 
All right. Wow. Good talk. I'll see you out there. <laughs> it's perfect. Uh, as we say at the top and the bottom, please give us a rate, a review, uh, you know, throw us, uh, throw us some kind of feedback somewhere, throw me an email, tell your friends about us, throw some, throw some love out there for us. Oh, wait, I do have one thing. I, oh I don't know. shit. Breaking news. I don't know if the viewers have had a chance to see this yet or not. And we're going to be, you know, publishing this a couple of weeks later, but have you guys seen the trailer for uh, Starfleet Academy? I have no, I don't watch trailers. Okay. All right. Never mind then. <laughs> not like on principle i just don't get around to it like do you want to you want to provide any context at all for that comment or do we want to like, do we want to watch it live right now like we can do that let's fucking do it all right hold on i, I bet it's on youtube right because youtube okay hold on let me stream this <laughs> do i have any embarrassing tabs open no german foot porn no, I said embarrassing. <laughs> German fart porn? What the fuck? Can we get an official trailer or do I have to go see it on Paramount Plus? Was this a month ago? Would that one have? Well, but this no. is like some kind of weird. No. It's Google Starfleet Academy trailer. E- yeah, that's fine. Starfleet Academy trailer. Game trailer. Rob, did you make this up? Did you did lie you, to us? Did, <laughs> did, did you? What up? did Rob? What did you watch? I don't know now. Oh wait, here we go. Yeah, trailer twenty twenty four. There you go. No, this isn't an actual no. trailer. This is yeah, not a trailer. Tough. I don't know. I don't know what I fucking saw. Just ignore me. I'm high. I don't know. Well, um, famously, you're not able to actually edit out audio, so we're gonna leave all of this in so you can oh, be Jesus embarrassed Christ. for all of our listeners. Um, because Please Rob, God, what the fuck that. did you do to us? I don't know. Um, so no, I, I uh, saw the announcement on Reddit, and I thought somebody had posted a trailer with it. Yeah, this didn't happen to be dreaming. on Monday, did it? Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh, no. fuck you! So let me tell you this, um, and this That's this is amazing. going this is going to be relevant for anyone who is younger than us. Um, April 1st is, and will always be the worst fucking day to be on the internet. I fucking hate it. Like the joke is old. Stop it. (laughs) I'm I'm done. I'm done. I'm I'm good. Like I get it. Ah, fuck. Everyone thinks they're so clever. You poor Rob is crying now because (laughs) of your stupid fucking jokes. Unbelievable. Unbelievable inconsolable over here we're gonna have to coax him out with a box set of star wars and some circus peanuts ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> anyways give I'll us a, it. give us a, yeah well give us a rate of review uh and we will catch you all next time here on captain's log supplemental good night bye-bye Thanks for listening to Captain's Log Supplemental. You can follow us on Twitter at PodCLS or send us hate mail at PodCLS3 at gmail.com.